Hey, Jody here. I'm doing some short circuit MIG welding today. I'll be comparing a little push versus pull. That's always interesting. Also, I'm going to be doing a little playing around with inductance settings for uphill welding. You'll see. I'm using the Rebel 205 today. It's the AC-DC model. It does AC-DC TIG, MIG, stick, and all that. Like a lot of machines, it's got a chart on the inside of the door. Guide you along. You follow what wire size you're using, what gas you're using. This tells me I need to use 35% inductance. We'll talk about that a little bit later. As I follow the chart along, all I got to do is pick my thickness. I'm only welding 11 gauge thick stuff today. Got plenty of that. Tells me 19 and a half volts and 300 inches a minute. We'll see how it works. I set the machine manually to that and 35% inductance. We'll play around with the inductance on uphill later. But this machine's got a lot of other options. I could set it on Smart MIG, also called S MIG, and just set my metal thickness and it would kind of dial things in for me. But this is what I'm doing today. 19 and a half volts, 300 inches a minute. I've always found that the settings on the machine are just a little high on the wire feed speed. And this one's actually listed just a little bit lower than some others I've seen. But to start with here, I'm doing the push angle. Now I have done this very same little exercise with other machines where I ran a little bit of push, a little bit of pull, cut and etch to check the depth of penetration. And the results are always interesting, but not surprising. They're not like night and day a lot of times. Sometimes there's subtle differences between push and pull. But manual welding, you're always going to hold a slightly different stick out. You're going to hold a slightly different angle. Your travel speed is going to be a little different. So you would have to test a whole bunch of cross sections unless you had some automated carriage to fix your stick out, fix your gun angle, fix your travel speed and all that. So the test is still worth doing because you can correlate what you see in your, in your eyes here immediately when you cut it and polish it and etch it, you immediately can see the result. And we're going to see that in just a minute here between these two sections that I just welded. Put some permanent mark on here so we don't mix them up. Usually they're pretty easy to distinguish because the pull has always got more of a convex bead on the face. We'll chop them here on the dry saw, both push and pull, roughly an inch and a half from the end, each of them. Got a decent polish on there with a red scotch Bright pad. The pull angle first, okay? So check that one out. Pretty decent little nugget there. Nothing like you would get on spray transfer, but this is short circuit transfer. It's not spray. Here is the push. Adequate, but a little less penetration than the pull. But a little flatter along the face of the weld, not as convex. I've been playing around with inductance settings today. I want to share with you something I've learned. One real benefit in being able to adjust inductance is with a high inductance, you're able to drop the wire feed speed down super low and still get a nice smooth arc. And it slows things down. It's like a time machine. When you're out of position and you just can't move fast, you can't keep up with the puddle, like uphill or if you're doing uh, coke tubing joints and you're kind of in a jam, you'd like for things to go a little slower. High inductance settings with a low wire feed speed. The arc is still smooth with a high inductance. Let's check it out. I set up a little lap joint and a T-joint configuration, and I'm marking it uphill just so you'll see me cut this later on. Normally I'd weld this downhill, but today I'm going to weld it uphill just to demonstrate the benefits of having an inductance setting on a machine. I'm dropping the wire feed speed all the way down from 300 to 190, leaving the voltage the same, but I'm going into the inductance setting here. Instead of 35 or 37 or so, I'm changing it to 100%. That's going to make a difference. All right, I'm going to use a little technique, a series of triangles here. It's almost, it almost looks like a series of circles. And actually on this thickness, it could very well be a series of circles. For a lap joint like this, I like to be going downhill when I tie into the edge. So that kind of helps fill in any potential undercut or any areas that you chop off of the corner. When you drop downhill just a tiny bit to make in your circle, okay, it helps fill that in. Taking a few dry runs here to be comfortable, and here we go. You can, you can see the very small oscillation of the MIG gun there and the speed that I'm going. The high inductance just keeps a smooth arc with that low of a wire feed speed. You can see there's hardly any spatter. Without the inductance set high like that, I'd most likely have a good deal more spatter. 
but it really helped me go along slow without having to rush things and it helped it from piling up and helped it from building up too much and, and making too convex of a bead. That's always a problem with MIG uphill unless you take it out kind of wide. I'm doing the same exact motion here on this T-joint. Both of these are fillet wells, but the T-joint's actually just a little bit easier because I can go just a little bit wider. I don't have to worry about nipping an edge or anything like that. Once again, I wouldn't normally weld eighth inch thick uphill, but the same technique, you dropping the wire feed speed and, and increasing the inductance works on 3 16ths, works on quarter inch. It just gives you a minute, gives you a little time to adjust. It slows the whole process down a little bit. And when you're going uphill, you're almost certainly going to get the penetration. Uphill always penetrates more. So even with a even with wire feed speed, which is your amperage adjustment, dropped all the way down to 190, I still get plenty of penetration on the lap, plenty of penetration on the T-joint. Still got a little bit of a convex bead, but it's in there.